Well, folks, welcome to Land Timber Stream. Good to uh, have folks tonight. Here it is a Thursday night, Friday Eve. We love Thursday night. I know I do. Uh, even though I'm on vacation right now, <laughs> uh, I still enjoy the fact that it's going to be Friday. So, hope you've had a good week so far and have good stuff coming up for the weekend. Um, I had a, I've had a great day so far, and I just want to do a quick wrap up of how day two of studycation went. And today went much better than yesterday, I have to say, just because mainly the fact that I got in more rest. Um, I mean, I slept, I got my sleep app said I had like 90 something percent on my sleep. So today I seem like, uh, you know, I wasn't, I'm not real tired right now uh, as I was yesterday. I mean, I'm tired, but, you know, I feel a lot better. And tomorrow I'll be, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to try to go to bed again in a couple of hours, get back to normal routine in that regard so that I can. Um, get up early, go to the gym, have a good workout, and then come in and hit the ground running on studies. So um, I'm just going to review tonight, and we're going to go over Bogon Networks real quick, uh, just to offer sort of a little bit of a technical gym uh, for folks. Uh, but yeah, I've been streaming quite a bit today. As a matter of fact, oh, I don't know how many hours it was, but this is going to be my third recording. I'm probably going to bundle them up into one single upload to YouTube. But yeah, the, the dates are looming. Um, November 30th, by the end of this month, basically, I need to get done with Units 4, 5, and 6 in Network Lessons. I didn't get, obviously didn't get as far today as I wanted to, but I did make some really, really good progress, I think, on learning some things. And as sort of um, an aside, another subject came up. A couple other subjects came up, but they're important. They're part of CCIE as well. So while I did not get as far as I wanted to in Network Lessons, um, I hope to make really good progress on that tomorrow. Then, of course, by December 10th, I need to have this Technologies Guide read. Um, and then by the, for the following two weeks after that, it is review mode, both sound flashcards. And part of the Network Lessons that I skipped. So today, this is from yesterday, pasted, but my intent was to complete the VPN section the MPLS layer 3 VPN section by the end of the night. I did not. Um, I did, however, get that done today. So let me see if I can pull up the outline, show you where we're at, where we're going. And if you have time tomorrow, some people may watch during, um, you know, if they're working and they could sort of play something in the background. You might be able to kind of hang out with me tomorrow, even if you're just lurking. That's fine. I don't mind that at all. Um, had some, a few folks in the chat today, but I realized it's a work day. And probably not many people watching, but I was on here quite a bit. Anyway, I got through L3 VPN, which basically involved finishing the, the extra net route leaking. That route, that lab was hard because I made it hard. I made it hard due to the network addressing that I use, which I'll get into in a minute. Um, I did also get through the encapsulation section and I've started the DV DMVPN section. So I'd hope to start this this morning, but I'm actually just now uh, starting, starting this. So to be honest, I don't wanna spend a lot of time labbing this stuff. I may do a few of the, like, phase three. I may do a phase three lab or two. Um, like, maybe phase three in EIGRP or something like that. But really, this is where I hope to make up some time. And then do a couple of these advanced, like the per tunnel QoS and DMVPN IPv6 over IPv4. I look forward to that. I may, tr Let's see how far I get. I may try to do a couple of these labs tomorrow during the day. Again, I'll probably start around 9 or 10 in the morning. And I'll do a morning session till around noon. And then in the afternoon, you know, I'll take a nice long lunch break, relax the mind. And then around 2, I'll probably pick up again, one or, one or two depending, and go till about 5. And then I'll come back again at 7 p.m. just to wrap up and do this helps me because i'm sort of reviewing my plan right my goal is to of course get to these now these aren't they're not a lot here 
But I know this section I do struggle with, and I want to really dig into this section. This will be Saturday, hopefully. Uh, more realistically, we'll still be doing DMV, DMVPN Saturday, and we'll start this Saturday, and then hopefully get through these sections on Sunday. Uh, including, wow, IPsec and, and GetVPN. Yeah, that's... So, realistically, I should try to get this done tomorrow. Saturday will be... Um, IP6 tunneling. Mark Milo, there's a tough, tough section. IP6 tunneling. Recall getting the introductory material on the NP. Yeah, it really is. And... I got my, uh, I've had my behind handed to me on the written exams um, in these sections. I'm not saying there's like out of 100 questions that there's 50 of them uh, that are six IPv6 related tunneling, but um, there's more than zero, or at least for me. So, uh, and yeah, I have really got to beef up on this because DMVPN, I've already done labs on this. Um, I've labbed all the way through this in the INE workbook. Uh, the INE workbook had none of this. Um, of course, this is covered in, to be fair, this is really, as far as I know, only in the scope of the written. So there were really no labs for this in the INE material that I remember. There are some videos on this, but... Network Lessons has labs and videos and configs and Wireshark captures. So this is going to be, this is going to fill in what I need, I think, for the written. Along with this section, too. Um, Adam and L2, L22PV3 also have my butt handed to me on this stuff. So, yeah, I hope to really spend, to be honest, like I've labbed IPsec. So this is not going to be too bad for me, but get VPN and IPv6 over IPv4 GRE with IPv6. So yeah, I would say hopefully DMVPN tomorrow. These two sections Saturday, well actually these 4.1 EGNH is going to be all day Saturday hopefully. And then Sunday will be IPsec. As a matter of fact, if I could spend all day Saturday on IPv6 tunneling on these, and then Sunday could be all of these. That's my goal. I have got to finish, though. I've got to finish four by the end of this thing. Oh, I have Monday, too. What am I talking about? Yeah, I have Monday as well. Um... Is that what you covered this morning, the VPN section? I missed that live stream. That's asked. Yeah, no problem, Mark Milo. I covered one lab. <laughs> uh, and it was hard. It was tough. It was this extra net route leaking. But the main reason it was really difficult is because I got sidetracked. Not really sidetracked. This is important, too. I started up a, you know, I talked yesterday about making the lab hard, and I started looking into what IP address schemes can you really use in IPv4. Like, what's allowed? What will route? What won't? And we got into, I got into the subject of Bogon network list. So, um, it's funny. I posted about it on Twitter. And we're going to go over it here at the end. This is going to be kind of my... Oh, yeah, that's right. I saw some Twitter questions on that. Yeah. Um, see, I'll go over that in a minute. But that... You know... And that was time well spent because this lab I plan to reuse in the future when I'm labbing, sharing labs with other people. And it is an area that I felt weak on and now I feel a lot stronger on as well. So... Anyway, yeah, that's what I did today. Also, I got through um, encapsulation and started DMVPN. So I've got to finish DMVPN tomorrow. That's all there is to it. All right, so that's what we're working on. That's where we're at. Um, yeah, so basically I'm going to say DMVPN finish tomorrow. 
uh, and then tunneling. IPv6 tunneling Saturday. So that's just, you know, not going to try to plan it all out. Uh, quiz time. So, yeah. Uh, let me pull up this tweet right here. Because there's a photo that a snapshot I did of the lab that I was working on earlier. And... Let me find it here. Yeah, so we got we had some good feedback. And there's several chains now. I can't even keep up really. Uh that's not it. Alright, one second. Let's see if anyone on, on stream here can't answer. Now if you've already seen it. No need to uh, type out the reply right away, but if you want to just try to take a guess, that's cool. All right, so here's the topology. No one has answered my bonus question, by the way. Um, all right, so looking at this, I, I just posted this. What is, what's the bonus question? All right, so I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, the first question is, do you see any problems? Will I be able to attain full reachability? Hey, Rittenhouse, will I be able to attain full reachability with this diagram as shown? And when I say reachability, I'm not talking about specifically, you know, obviously we can set up several different routing protocols here. We can do static routing. We can do PBR. Really, the question is here is look at the, um, there's nothing wrong with the topology. It's kind of a, physically speaking, it's a star hub. 0 0.128, never thought of that even being a possibility. Well, that's a good question. Uh, will I be able to reach this? Hmm, I know you can use 0. Uh, well, can you? <laughs> that is a good question. So, um, I want you to look at the layer three addressing and then look at the layer two segmentation here with our VLANs. So do you see any problems? Uh, let's address the zero question. That jumps out. That's probably the easiest one. I believe that zero through 126, if I recall correctly. Um, so you, class A. All right, yeah, you are, um, so first of all, um, you are not allowed to use any address uh, as a destination that is, okay. Now, we're talking destinations, right? Well, because when you say reachability, uh, your source needs to work and your destination needs to work. Must be valid, right? So I can tell you um, that this definitely does not work because basically anything with a zero in the first octet will not work and just to be sure I tried it <laughs> and no you cannot enter that you can the router will bark at you say it is not possible to add this at, to an interface I tried it um, and it just doesn't work like some things say they don't work and yet you try them and they actually do work not in this case all right so yes that is one problem um, again, this is a lab environment, right? Uh, perhaps it is reserved for something I never thought about. Yeah, so this can be used as a source. Uh, here, here's one bonus question. It's not like the bonus question that I had, but um, uh, can, where is this used as, it is actually used as a source and destination, to be honest. 
it can be used in legit legitimately as a source and a destination in an IP uh, in, in an Ethernet environment. Um, you you cannot apply it to an interface though. So um, the destination is, and if you could think of them, some examples would be great. I could tell you because I recently researched this for IPv6, right? For IPv6, uh, there's also this address, right? Which is basically all zeros. And I had the same question. I researched this for IPv6. I was like, what? And uh, there are some differences here, but essentially, this is more common than what you would see here. Uh, this can only be used as a source in IPv6. Uh, there is no such thing as an IPv6 destination, but this I have seen as an e as a source and destination. And if you haven't thought of any examples yet, I'll show you one. No, this is uh, not in. We're talking about in the data plane, not in the control plane. So this is. Legitimately talking about source and destination addresses in uh, Ethernet packets, right? Or Ethernet frames. Um, so I'll show you an example. Here's a packet capture of DHCP, right? So I may be wrong about destination here, actually. So here's the source, right? We don't know the source yet. It's called the uh, unknown. Well, and uh, it's unknown unicast. Okay, yeah, yeah, no problem, Mark Milo. Uh, I thought I had seen it also as a destination for some sort of protocol, but I might be wrong there. For sure, I've seen it in, uh, you also see it in ARP. Maybe a reverse ARP? Of course, remember, you don't ARP in IPv6, and that's why, um, let me see here. Let me look in my repo of packet captures that I've created myself. Um, yeah, I don't have any ARPs here. Dude for him, how are you doing, man? Hope you're enjoying the new job. Hope you're swallowing, you know, the fire hose is not knocking you down too hard. Your question you had today had me really pondering, man. I thought I waited to answer because I thought I was going to get to DMVPN today. I did not. Uh, ITIT, it is, yeah. Oh, man, it's knocking you down. That's okay. That's a good sign, though. If it wasn't, I'd be worried that uh, you, you got the right job, you know? Uh, so, yeah, if we're doing a discovery, yeah, that's true. This So with our... ARP would not qualify in terms of what I'm asking because um, ARP, of course, is a frame. So 0, 0.0.0.0 is not a source, neither a destination. Uh, Ethernet addresses are so. Anyway, all right, that's one problem. Very good. Uh, if you look on Twitter, you'll see the other ones. They have all been identified. The bonus question has not been answered, but... Um, all right, do you see any other problems? Let's talk about layer three. All right, so let's go through these. 203, doesn't look too bad. 198, 192, nothing really suspicious there. It is slash 16. Uh, we are using OSPF here, and these do get redistributed as slash 32s, but that's not a problem with the topology we have, uh, and that's not part of the question anyway. Um, 19202, that looks okay. 192, um, 203.0, that's fine, right? 100.64. Uh, we've got some ones. All right, so we've got a 169.254.00. Who can tell me what that is? Uh, what that type of address is called? Uh, I know you've seen it if you've ever had problems with your wireless network <laughs> on Windows. I know you've seen it, and I know you've seen it if you worked in networking for any real length of time. Uh, 
APIPA, if I recall correctly. Yes, I did not remember. I could not remember that acronym. Um, but yes, it is called APIPA. It is also called uh, Link Local Unicast. It's called Link Local Unicast uh, for IPv4, which makes us think also of IPv6, right? Uh, IPv6 also has a category or a reserved block of addresses that are for Link Local Unicast and FE80, right? Yeah, something about automatic addressing law. Don't know top of my head. So Link Local Unicast is essentially... Um, if I configure, if I have my IPv4 interface set for DHCP, um, if I'm un unable to obtain an IPv4 address through DHCP, um, my stack will automatically assign an address from this range. I don't know how it determines it. I think it depends by operating system. Um, I wonder if we have any interfaces here I have a lot of like logical interfaces and stuff. Um, no, I don't. I almost guarantee I'd have it on my uh, Windows computer. But yeah, so what that allows you to do is let's say that you are on a wireless ad hoc network, right? Um, if you knew the other, if you were essentially in the same wireless, you know, um, broadcast domain, as it were, um, and you could both, you know, two different laptops could uh, associate themselves with an SSID, but that SSID did not provide automatic addressing or DHCP, then your NICs could assign an IP from this space and if you knew the other person's address or if you had another protocol like uh, you know Windows has a discovery um, neighbor discovery um, then you might be able to learn and you would actually be able to communicate over this network right question is in IPv6, a link local address cannot be routed, right? We know that. FE80, you know, you establish a, a link adjacencies with that, with the IGRP, V6. Um, there are a lot of other uses for the um, link local address. Um, but you cannot route, you know, uh, that that address like you can't route past your local link you cannot route traffic from another link destined to the link local address on on a link right what about IPv4 is there a problem here well the answer is no there's not so well yes you would never want to use this this is actually considered a reserved address by IANA um, just like 192.168 is. 169.254-00 uh, slash 16 is a reserved block. Doesn't mean it doesn't actually work. Your router will allow you to assign it. And as a matter of fact, I don't see it on here. But I had to assign loopbacks to these. And I use 169.254.255.255 slash 32 on one of these, uh, I think this PE router. Or just fine, not a problem. Um, anyway, so that's not an issue. And to be honest, there is no other. I did not encounter any other problems, so I had to reassign this. I had to assign something realistic here. Um, the other thing you can't use that I tried is a one two seven address. So one two seven is like zero, right? Um, and IPv four. And that is with a slash um, yeah, I think it's just eight we'll We'll see for sure in a second, but 
Yeah, you absolutely cannot assign that to a physical interface. I tried. It doesn't work. Uh, but I took that off. I, I was tempted to put that on here, but I didn't. Uh, the whole address block reserved my excellent, but short. <laughs> yes, my excellent, but uh, short term memory is not deceiving me. Yes, sir, you are correct. That is definitely the case with me, man. I will probably forget all this in a week. Um, but we're going to keep grinding it, right? So, all right, do you see any other problems here? The only other information you have besides the physical links and the router numbers, which makes no difference, is the VLAN information. So do you see any problems with the VLANs here? Uh, yep. Okay, Mark, Milo, what do you got? Go ahead. What are VLAN issues here, sir? Issue or issues? And then we'll ask a bonus question. Well, there's two bonus questions, actually. Uh, zero and 4095 reserved, if I recall correctly. One is the default of Cisco equipment. Yes. So you are correct. 4095 is here. This will not work. You cannot uh, use it. The parser will not allow you to use it. So very good. Good job. Um, I know there's some VLANs in the range that technically you can use, but are used for specific technology. You want to say 1002 through 1004, 1005. Wait, yeah, 4094 is the largest. Yes, that's correct for now. So um, I wanted to push the limit, so I ended up using like 4094, 4093, 4092, 4091, 4090, or something like that. And yeah, that, that worked. once I took this out, I, I wanted to try it anyway, just to see. Um, and, you know, that, that worked. So you're hitting on something else, Mark Milo. Uh, you are so well you're you're spot on so you're spot on yes there are reserve vlans uh now if you have sbi some of the extended range vlans get eaten up but that is more a configuration issue if i recall um Correct. Yes, I do remember that now. If you assign a an SVI, like if you enable VLAN, yeah, like uh, interface VLAN two. Yeah, I think it essentially assigns an extended VLAN to sort of allow some demarcation between the. Um, the layer two interface and the layer three interface, yes. Right. But I believe the parser will tell you. Um, you know, it'll tell you about that. Like, it, uh, we may test that tomorrow, though. We may test that out. Um, the same goes, I think, with like, um, I want to say private VLANs, but I could be wrong. Uh, that's kind of a logic trick, right? But yes, you are right, Marmelo. So VLANs 1002 through 1005 are reserved. Uh, there's three bonus questions. All right, first one is, what are the names of the reserved VLANs? By the way, uh, you can configure these. So I actually configured 1002 here. It doesn't bark at you, right? Uh, you can configure 1002 here um, on a port. You cannot, however, assign a, an SVI to one of these VLANs on the switch image I was using. It will not let you do that. Um, so I was able, however, on VLAN 1002 to assign an IP address to the interface. I'm just not message telling you that 1002 or is supposed to be used only with FDDI or something. Um, it actually tells me... Um, so, take it back. Here's what I did on the switch. All right. I did... 
Interface VLAN 1002. IP address, blah, blah, blah. I think it allowed me to do that. However, um, the VLAN was shut down. I tried to do a no shut and I think it even gave me a message, but it did not uh, open the interface. Um, I signed the SBI, that's correct. Here, I signed the SBI. Um, here, I assigned the uh, sub interface encapsulation 1002. And it worked here. Um, here, I signed the SBI, and I also did a show interface trunk. And it showed that that, inter that VLAN was allowed and in use on this interface. Um, however, the when you do when you did a show VLAN brief, it said it was um, I think it said up slash unsup unsupported. So it lets you get that far. And then, however, when I try to go to VLAN 1002, no shut, it, would, it gave me an error message. Like, unable to, or VLAN is not supported. Something like that. So bottom line is, try as you will, uh, on a regular Ethernet interface, neither on a, a, an Ethernet interface nor on a SBI. Well, again, it allowed you to use the SBI. I wonder if you had an SBI tied to whatever these are reserved for, if it will work, maybe. But the, the switch logic knows what you're doing and that you're not allowed to do it, and it doesn't allow it. Um, so bonus question. I need to think of what the other one is before I forget. Uh, well, the actual VLAN cannot be assigned on Ethernet. Man, I'll have to try laving this up now. What I meant is assigned on an Ethernet interface. So, on the switch, for example, I can create a uh, switch port access VLAN. Uh, blah 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 right and if the interface type gigabit ethernet right this I did not try actually so I guess my point being is that if you have uh, interface gigabit ethernet zero zero even if it's allowed on the trunk say it's a trunk port It'll show that the VLAN is allowed on the trunk port and active. That's right. It's, it said so. It said uh, active unsub. So let's say you have VLAN one. It'll say active VLAN one thousand two active unsub unsupported. If you do show interface trunk, even if it's an Ethernet interface, it will show that it is allowed and active on the trunk. Now what if this were another interface type that was not Ethernet? Because this is the bonus question. What are the names of these, what are the use of these reserved VLANs? They must be there for something. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best here. Uh, man, I always get, there's, there's some of these I get they're not Ethernet. Uh, I'll give you that much. Uh, 102, 103, 104, 105. Okay, I think it's token ring default. Betty default. TR net default. I think that's what they are. So, 
Obviously, non Ethernet interfaces, token ring and FIDI, all four. Yeah, it's just the order. You know, does token ring go first or does FIDI go first? That's what I always get wrong. Um, let me double check here in my notes, my drill sheet. This is the kind of thing that you have to, <clears throat> these trivia bits is what the written is all about, man. And just having as much of that in your head as you can prior to the exam. That's, that's what the story is all about. So I'm going to be doing a lot of flashcards here probably tonight. Uh, I'm going to cover the sections. Uh, really? Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, you need to know principles. See, I got it, I got it wrong. Uh, it's the other way around. Fiddy starts first. Uh, you cannot assign it as an access port to an Ethernet port, right? Uh, I could see that. Okay, thanks for doing that, Mark Milo. Now we know the... the Okay, it says warning, but does that mean that it assigned it and warned you? Like, what is the, because, um, shoot, well, while I'm talking, I could be loading up a lab here. Because, uh, my question is, um the second bonus question oh it did not actually assign it okay so the second bonus question is uh can you assign reserved vlan numbers to ios router interfaces ethernet router interfaces And then the last bonus question is, what do all these IP network numbers have in common? So anybody get to, yeah, see this, I always get these, it's fitty first, fitty first, fitty first. If I can get that right, I always remember the rest. Like token, ring, default. I always remember their names. I just don't remember which number. Uh, I don't always remember which number goes with which name. Uh, 1004, 1005. Yeah. Uh, it says that the following VLANs are unsupported on Ethernet. 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. Yep. That's the message you get. Good. Well, at least it tells you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you would have to have a FIDI interface on the switch or a token ring interface on the switch. Right? And probably only in that case would it allow you. Um, I don't remember the last time I saw one of those interface types on a switch. Um, it's been 20 years plus. Uh, no, about 20 years that I've seen. I used to see FiddyNet um, interfaces. But it wasn't on Cisco switches, like 3, um, 3Com before they were... No, it was on Cabletron. <laughs> all right, so we've identified all the problems. Obviously, I had to change this VLAN. I had to change this VLAN. I had to change this IP address. After that, everything worked just dandy. Um, so... Back to bonus question number two. I'm not gonna worry about the lab because we'll probably be down by the time uh, I get to this. So uh, bonus question two is, can you assign reserved VLAN numbers to iOS ethernet router interfaces? Um, the answer is yes. <laughs> and again, um, you know, router interface is a different animal. So, you know, interface GI00 dot, 1002 for example and then I mean that's not super important 
right? I mean, this is pretty much an arbitrary number. Um, as long as it matches on the other side, you know, or on whatever uh, broad, you know, shared medium, then you're good. But uh, so this is gigabit Ethernet. Uh, then you could come here and you could say incap dot one q one thousand two. Okay, that will work. No shut. Works just fine. All right. Um, so this is really more of a reserve on the switches. What I want to try tomorrow is actually to connect uh, two routers. Because I configured this router this way just fine. It had no problem. I think it even sent the packets on this interface. But they got to the switch and they just got dropped. So what I'm going to try tomorrow is to connect two routers using those reserve VLANs and see if it works. Um, I know you can configure it. Whether it works or not, we'll find out. And the last question, what do all these IP network numbers have in common? They do have something in common. Um, uh, where is this? So many screens. Yeah, what do they have in common? So, initial glance, they don't seemingly be, they aren't seemingly related to each other, right? Hey, we got a new follower. Thank you so much. Um, I don't have my stream labels thing running. Let me get that running. So, get your name down there at the bottom, my friend. Thank you for the follow. Always appreciate the support. And we got a question here. So they get removed automatically on the trunk link or through VTP. So um, I was not running VTP here. Papa Plintus. Yes, thank you very much. Oh, it might play it again. I don't mean it for it to do that. Uh, just launched Streamlab App Store. Oh my gosh. So um, basically, this is just part of the switching proce process, right? So it's part of the switch logic. Um, it didn't. It does not get removed on the trunk link. So it actually showed, and you can look at my. I'm going to post my videos later. Um, that's exactly what's happening, Mark Milo. So. Like, I'm even thinking maybe some older switches, you could actually configure it on the switch. No VTP or anything. But um, it's just the switch logic is set up to not allow those VLANs at all. So um, I don't know where in the switch logic, you know, if you've ever seen those diagrams of the internals of a catalyst switch and the route processor and the switch processor and... Um, <clears throat> the cues and the buffers. Um, I don't know where in that logic, but somewhere there's knobs that say, hey, just don't allow these VLANs to be used, right? It's not a function, I don't think, of any particular protocol. Uh, they are just um, guardrails in the switch processor somewhere. Um, yeah, no problem. You're not putting me on the spot at all. And I like being put on the spot because if I can't answer, that means I need to research before the written exam to make sure I know. Uh, so that's fine. But yeah, so what do all these ranges have in, in common? So we see some 192s, but these are not in the private range. So you might think theoretically, you know, there's a lot of 192s that are part of uh, public websites, right? Like let's do a, if we do a who is a 192.0.0.1, Uh, it just says assigned, right? Uh, 192.94.18.3. Willing Minds Hostmaster, right? So, yeah, private starts 
at 192.168. They are part of the Class C range, but not all of them, right? So two, uh, well, 100, that is not part of the Class C range, right? But uh, that's a good guess. Um, now this 0 0.128.254.2, that is a network number that is does share, even though it's not legitimately used or cannot be is assigned to a an interface, it is an IP network number. Um, and it does share something in common with 100.64.00. Uh, also in this list of addresses it are these uh, numbers. So the private, Address space 10.0.0.0 slash 8. Um, once to 16.0.0 slash 20. Um, I think it's 20, right? 20. Yeah. Um, we have 192.168.0.0 slash um, 16. Of course, this is class A. It is true. It's class A. Class B. So, um, I think I'm getting that wrong. Uh, they are a class of private, should start one of new ones to say, yeah. So that is known as what, RFC 1918, right? I got asked that uh, a while back on an interview and I did not know the answer. And to this day, I will always know <laughs> uh, this answer. Slash 12, yeah, okay, shoot, I knew that was wrong. I just didn't know what it was, yeah, slash 12. Yeah, it's in the second octet. Four bits of the second octet, not the third. Um, so yeah, these all share something in common with these. And the answer is, was in the title of today's agenda. Uh, knew, never thought about remember the actual mask. Yes, okay, the reason you need to remember the mask is because... Um, Let's say, for example, let's do some more who is, right? Um, let's say I have 172.16.0.0 slash 20 versus 162.16.0.0 slash 12. So think about how many um, host addresses do you get? with this. Um, I don't know the number exactly, but it's a lot, right? 10, this is a lot. A slash eight is a lot, right? Um, so once to 16 slash 12 is a lot too. And where did my link go? Oh, so many links, so many places to look. Closed it. So let's go to IP calculator, right? Jody's.d is my favorite one. Once to 16.0.0 slash 16 or slash 20. 40.94, right? That's that's a few, but yeah, there we go. Aren't we low? Uh, so now if you go to slash 12, yeah, over a million host addresses, right? Um, so here's the thing. It is important to know this because notice that slash 12 means, you know, a lot of people think, oh, once it's 16 and then anything after that. That would be slash 16. That's wrong. 
So you can, this one's unique because you can, it doesn't fall on a class boundary. So you can make a mistake of, not a class boundary, but it's not a, a there are borrowed bits here, right? So slash 12 means that 172.32 could be a public website. Once two dot let's try thirty five dot fifteen dot eight T Mobile <laughs> somebody's some phones right um, and the other thing about that is you need to be careful with the mask is because with slash twenty um, this is just an, as as an example right. Um, You'd be leaving a lot out. You're correct. It is just not emphasized when you learn about the private range. I'll do my best to start remembering the mask. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. All right, so back to this question here. Uh, we've already identified some members of this group. And... I, this is a link that tells you what they are, and I'm going to pull it right from, this is the IPv4 Bogon list, aggregated. So, oh, I have a scale in here. Here they are, and I just decided to use all these in my... Uh, the ones that I could anyway. So these are reserved, right? Obviously, two two four zero zero three. I could not use that in the lab for a unicast lab, right? Um, but yeah, these other ones are used as tests, as uh, for development and other purposes. There used to be more of them that were reserved by the IANA, but as the depletion of IPv4 has occurred, um, over time they have unreserved some of these. Uh, let's find Bogon. Yeah, so here's what they're used for. Current network, source only. That is what zero, we talked about that. Private, carrier grade NAT. Uh, when you have carry grade NAT, you use with subscribers. Uh, an awesome prank question at work. Absolutely, man. And that's what I did as a kind of a prank. And that's what I hope to spring on someone someday uh, when I tr start trading labs. And, of course, routers will route this normally. But what you would do is you'd put a Bogon filter list on a firewall, like most routers and firewalls have. You know, they block these by default. Because ordinarily you might be able to route them, right? Um, is I'm going to build a lab and I'm going to put a firewall with the Bogon list and I'm going to say, you know, provide connectivity uh, or troubleshoot why there is lack of connectivity to router 36, right? Um, so yeah, loopback obviously, link local we talked about. Uh, this is private space. And then these are some IETF protocol assignments. Uh, 020 slash 24, 192.168, we talked about 198.18. This is when you want to do private testing between subnets. Uh, so let's say you have 192.168 and a 10.00, and you want to set up a routing domain where, you do, well, where you're able to do testing. This should not be routed uh, on the internet as well, right? Uh, testnet 2, testnet 3, and then multicast block. So that is the answer, folks. And then there are some other cool, like, so I, I asked myself today, Magnetar, here, I'm here to be friendly. That's good to know, man. I think all of us are. So... Yes, absolutely, man. Out of our research pile, I know mine keeps getting bigger and bigger. 
By the way, I published these, uh, Mark Milo, uh, these agendas. I've been banned recently. Okay. Um, I hear you. I hear you. Yes, Git. So that is one of the Git repos. And that's one of the reasons I, I do that um, is because I go back and try to find these links later. And all I have to do is do a search on my Git repo. So um, that's one, one thing that, that's why I started saving these. Like I used to just write up an agenda and then I started sharing these uh, meat chunks. And these become really good for searching because I've got Bogon, I've got, if I just remember Bogon, I can go back and search and find the links. Um, so, uh, repos. Yes, thank you, Mark Milo. Stream agendas, so. And I've got a lot in there now, like I've started archiving them by year because, uh, and it's kind of like a blog uh, of sorts of my, my journey. Want to be up front real early. I see you have engineering as a tag. Yes, sir. Or ma'am, I do. So that's those are the meat chunks of the day, folks. Uh, thanks so much for stopping by and educational. Yes, sir. Mag yes, Magnetar. Appreciate it. I uh, hope you all have a great evening. Uh, that's about that's going to wrap up the stream for tonight. Tomorrow I'll be back at it. Again, I'm on studycation, day three. And we'll be hitting some DMVPN and other tunneling technologies. 10-ish, I'm going to say. But, oh, you're very welcome, Mark Milo. I, I'll be posting um, in Discord uh, whenever uh, Adios do for him. And definitely check us out on the Discord. And we shall see you folks tomorrow. Wish you good bits to all. And to all, a good night. <laughs> uh, see you tomorrow here on the Land Tamer stream.